Hassan. And I'm Lizette Hassan. And we'll be your hosts today. I'm the current uh, president of the Orange County chapter of the CRFG. And this is my wonderful wife, Lizette. Welcome to Let's Find Out. We're gonna take a tour of uh, our fig orchard today. The figs will be ripening in succession. Some will be ready, some won't. Um, but I'm hoping that we'll get a great, um, a great taste testing and, and both introduction seminar on, uh, on figs with an emphasis on rare figs, outstanding figs, what to look for, when to pick them, and uh, uh, taste quality. So welcome. I'm standing next to one of our fig trees. Fig trees uh, originated in, uh, in, in uh, eastern Turkey bordering along uh, Iraq and parts of Iran. And the fig tree itself, or the fig plant itself, ended up spreading throughout the Mediterranean basin. Uh, it has uh, a lot of religious value and the trees have been cultivated for thousands of years. What we're looking at specifically today, this one here, is actually a volunteer seedling. Um, What's a volunteer it, seedling? It's, uh, it's a, uh, you know, Practically speaking, it, uh, a rat or a rabbit ate one of the fruit that was pollinated, dropped it somewhere, and the seeds grew. And then they grow pretty, uh, uh, pretty aggressively afterwards. So what we did is we took advantage of that and grafted onto it. So that's why we have uh, a nice specimen tree here with several different types of fruit on it that we'll get into. So we're gonna talk about a little bit of the history some of the growing characteristics, what we look for, how they grow, how they get pollinated, and uh, how we pick them when they're ripe. So one of the things we look for with certain figs is do they split or not? Or do they have a tight eye or not? And we'll get into that. So this is the osteole of an unripe fig. And some figs, as they ripen, will maintain a tight osteole. So they won't let humidity in, they won't let bugs in, they won't spoil. And this variety in general, this is San Francois, is known for maintaining a tight eye. So I'm not sure why this split. It might've gotten a little too much water one day. Um, but in general, you can see the inside is nice and tight. There's a lot of, of uh, syrup there sealing in the flavor. This is going to be really yummy when it, when it ripens. It's almost ripe. In fact, here's one that is ripe. It's got a nice cracking pattern. A lot of times when they ripen, they'll hang down there. It's got a little give to it. It's got this cracking pattern within. You can see despite that, despite being ripe, it's maintained a really tight eye with some of the internal syrup that is congealed around the opening, so bugs will have a hard time getting in. This is San Francois, it's a phenomenal tasting variety, which we will get to try today. So that one's purple, does that mean it's ripe? That's a great question. Different varieties of figs will ripen in different patterns. So this fig, San Francois, should turn purple with a little bit of green remaining and have some cracking be soft and hang down when it's ripe. So here's one that was grossly overripe, bugs picked at it, it's done. You'll see kind of the, the splatter damage, the, the blood trail on it. This one is one that is ripening, so it's green. Most figs will start off green. And as they ripen, they will either stay green or lighten to a yellow or darken to a purple, blue, or black. This one again is uh, purple with some green. And then some will develop some cracking, some won't. Some will dry on the tree, and the ones that can dry on the tree have a really high sugar content, and, and that'll help preserve them. They'll kind taste of like amazing. A raisin? Kind of like a raisin, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Now, here, this field, right here underneath, you can see one that has gone just past ripe here, and it's drooling a little bit. <laughs> this here with black fig fly, and this may not even be necessarily black fig fly. I get worried when I open the inside and I see a little brown tinge, it usually means it's gone bad. So this is just past ripe, probably won't taste very good at all. So we'll, we'll toss that. But there's one next to it. This will probably ripen over the next week or so. So figs, when they ripen, they get to a certain size and then all of a sudden the last week or so, they will ripen very quickly. So it's important to know what type of fig you have because when they decide to ripen, they will swell and change color, probably crack and then droop all of a sudden. So this is still held on pretty tightly. And if you feel it, it's still a little bit firm. So go ahead it's and feel it. It's not perky anymore. But you see this one here? 
right? It's not perky, exactly. Notice how these ones that are pointing up, they stay pointing up. This one was pointing up and now it just wants to droop down. This one is ripe, so go ahead and feel that. See a oh, little yeah. bit of give? Definitely. And then go ahead and you wanna pull it from the stem. Pull? Pull and twist. And that's your San Francois fig. So this variety again, nice tight eye. It'll crack, which gives it some visual appeal like a pomegranate mm -hmm. but nice tie-dye doesn't split and i like to cut it lengthwise this has a gorgeous color sometimes we'll talk about a cavity that means some figs on the inside have this opening some people like the the cavity some don't this one has a very tiny cavity and it's filled with this pooling syrup that's here some people call it honey and we may even catch some varieties that have honey dripping just from the osteal sealing that in. So why don't you try this? What do you think? It's not as sweet as I expected. It's still delicious. Tastes like a, a jam. Great mouthfeel. Uh, the seeds are not hard. And a nice little crunch. Mm -hmm. Wow, but it has um, a muted, it's not overwhelmingly sweet. This is delicious. It's not overwhelmingly sweet. To me, this is, um, it's not like like table, sh table sugar sweet. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's more syrup sweet. It lingers mm -hmm. on your tongue, coats your mouth, and 10 seconds after you finish it, 20 seconds, you can still taste the sweetness. Mm -hmm. Almost like the sugar is slowly dissolving, getting to you instead of getting to you all at once. I noticed that when I took a bite, I tasted some sweetness, but when I incorporated it with the skin, I almost tasted like honey. It, it tasted like honey. Yeah. This one I like because I feel the flavor is uh, complex. Not complex in sense of multiple different flavor mm -hmm. profiles, but it hits you. The different taste notes. evolves over mm -hmm. time and it lingers with you. And you described it as great mouthfeel. I also feel like it's got a meatiness, a density mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just as in, out, done. It, it you can really savor it. What it looks like. It's incredibly dense. Yeah. It tastes, you feel all of that in your mouth. It's not, um, it's not watery whatsoever. It tastes like a jam that has life to it. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. And this one we'd say is, is more of a berry flavored fig. So, mm -hmm. so this is phenomenal. Where can someone find like find these? Uh, this particular variety is actually quite rare. I uh, I think the number of people I personally know who have it less than five. You know, I can count on my hands. But uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have a uh, couple sticks available at our CRFG sign exchange. We can also trade or, or sell them on the Our Figs forum. Sign exchange? What's that? Oh, so um, most of the chapters of the California Rare Fruit Growers Association host a big event, but once a year, usually in the winter time, where um, members and some people, uh, members of the public can come and either get uh, dormant um, pieces of wood for propagation. And those usually, are the scions. Those are the scions, exactly. Okay. So you can graft, you can root. Um, some people bring seeds for planting, but for figs, usually it's... Uh, dormant pieces of sticks and we can talk about how to propagate uh, uh, so this fig uh, looks like the bugs just started to get to it and I can tell because I pushed on it a little bit and I saw this little beetle starting to crawl out of it this beetle once it gets in it spoils the fig from the inside not quite like black fig fly this will get to it just when they're about ripe this variety is called lardaro um, well, it's like a race. You have to try to beat the beetle. Yeah, try to beat the beetle to it. And um, usually what will happen is, I'm sure we'll find some, I'll squeeze it. And usually they'll start flying from the outside. Or I'll squeeze and you'll see bubbles coming out. So mm -hmm. the way I know this one just got to just beat us maybe by half a day is a squeeze. And it's still good on the inside. There's, there's still pools of honey. But there's just a little browning that's going on here. You I wait another, right yeah. You, know, you wait another day, and it'll start to, it'll feel like it's fermenting. Mm. So this one beat us. But let's see if we can find a good, uh, good one. 
So does that mean you have to come out here and check every day? When they're ripening, especially when you have as many as we do, you gotta come check almost every day. They will ripen in succession. Some varieties can dry on the tree, can hold on the tree, but at that point you're praying that the birds don't get to it. Here's one here, so if you feel it, right? It's on the feeling. Oh yeah, I love it. Right. Yes, you got in, yep, just pull that off. So this is Lardaro. And then it has a nice tight eye and you can see it's sealed with that syrup. So this yeah. is something that's very nice for, for people in humid areas or where it rains a lot in the summer. It's, it's preventative, little, it's like a trap. Yeah, a little ant trying to come through. Mm -hmm. Starting, the, but so far so good. You wanna cut that open? Sure. <laughs> oh. So not as colorful as the previous one, but still looks like it has great little, what would you call these? No, oh, the little flower segments. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's, that's um, this is the development of the fruit. So a fig is actually a set of hundreds of flowers. These are all flowers that, you're, that we're eating that have developed that are wrapped in mm. on themselves. There's, this one has a small cavity. So it's, this cavity is a little bigger than the San Francois. You see the little cavity where yeah, right the honey there. pulls in right there. This one will still be very flavorful. And you can see, right, it didn't go bad. It doesn't have any of that browning that we would have been concerned about. Mm -hmm. Has stayed nice and sealed. Do you and like it, to try it? No bugs coming out. A little more watery, but a little more floral too. But sweeter. That's right. Now this one comes from, let's see, the, the, the origin I believe is Middle Eastern, but it was preserved in Crimea and one of the former Soviet um, repositories. Wow. Mm -hmm. The flavor doesn't hit you quite as strong up front. So at first you do feel it's watery mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden yeah. it hits you. So does that mean that it's more sweet, like closer to the skin? That's a good question. That I don't know. That I don't know. I don't know if it's like mangoes where the closer you are to the skin versus the seed, the flavor profile changes. Well, I felt like this one tasted like honey once I got to the skin. I do feel some of them have a stronger flavor towards the osteol, towards the... So in the past, when I've pulled a fig, I see this little white sap here, and it's very sticky. I've heard that it has medicinal qualities to it. I don't know. What is this? And I also know that can make people itchy. Yeah, so actually it makes me very itchy. But the, the fig latex, or fig sap, is a protective substance for the plant. Is it like the latex that we hear people have allergies to? I don't think it's true latex in that sense. Okay. Um, but I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think so. Um, we call it latex because it comes out like this white, uh, thick substance. And some mm -hmm. trees are known to have this latex-like material. In figs, it, it may have a few different properties, but the main one that I know of is it coats the inside of the wood Oh. And it's almost like uh, antifreeze, so it helps the fig branches stay viable in the in the winter time. So mm -hmm. they can go below freezing and still survive. Oh, wow. So Does that's that help that's them one of the purposes of it. Does it help them stay dormant but alive? It helps them not. Uh, yeah, it helps insulate the wood from from freezing temperatures, so they can survive in below freezing temperatures. Now, I don't think they can go below, let's say zero Fahrenheit, but they can go down to twenty Fahrenheit. So so below freezing. Um, but you're right, it is also irritating to the skin. So actually, I have a few sap burns wow. here where the sap didn't just get on my skin, but it got on my skin and then the sun hit it and then it lit up. Yeah, so. you were blistering, I remember that. So wear long sleeve shirts. Yes. <laughs> now for me, uh, also there's a little bit of the material in some of the leaves as well. So if I brush up against the leaves, within 10 or 20 minutes, I get really, really itchy. So make sure that you wear long sleeve shirts when you're out dealing with pigs. And and the latex can be irritating to, to different parts of the body. So if you're a little sensitive to it, it can definitely irritate your lips. You can get some swelling, tingling. Um, Throat? No? Tongue? 
I think you might get, some people are sensitive, may get tingling of the, the tongue as well, mm -hmm. and the inside of the mouth. So just gauge it. Play it by gauge, ear. Yeah. Don't gorge on 20 at a time. <laughs> so you can try another one. Okay. I might have puffy lips by the end of this. Mm. How does this, this one compare to the last one you had? This one is not as sweet, but the way it feels in your mouth, it definitely has a lot of texture. Um, it, it feels meaty, like mm -hmm. you said earlier. And this one feels like I could spread it over a piece of toast with some cheese or a little bit of honey. But you don't need honey with it. Yeah, you don't need honey, you're right. Yeah, and this one has a little bit of a thicker skin. Mm. Yeah, but that one, the flowers is what they're called? You know, I forget the exact name. Well, the, them, little, the little, little white flowers. strands, Mm -hmm. um, they're firmer, mm -hmm. nice and crunchy. Feels great. Mm -hmm. It feels filling. Very filling. Usually, I can only eat two or three of these, and then I'm done. Yeah. So, this was your project over the weekend. Well, I woke up about. one day because I kept hearing birds, 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 and you see those power lines up there. We have. Um, birds that just line up on the power lines and when nobody's here they like to come down and go after the figs so I read somewhere and even visited different farms where I saw that they had some kind of reflective material over their garden or over the farm and I asked one of the workers what's that for because it looked awfully festive and he told me no we use this to confuse the birds apparently it confuses them just the reflection um, it makes them you know confused so i said why not let's try it ordered this reflective tape it's it looks very pretty um and just kind of yeah i had like five minutes so i literally just went from this side and just quickly ran it through the fig area and in two days since you know since it's been up i have not seen the crows up there coincidence possibly but I'd like to think that it's because of this so we'll see we'll see if we have a, a larger crop of, of figs to enjoy because of it I don't know if it works on bees it does look really festive looks like there's a birthday there's a, party <laughs> there's a, a TP gone wrong now this is the beginning this is the beginning of our original fig plot so there were some 30 trees packed back to back every six feet there's like a row in the front yeah. and a row in the back. Yeah, two rows. And then we quickly ran out of space. But um, Lizette mentioned the, the birds. And unfortunately, the birds do beat us. The rats beat us. But the birds have an interesting dance. It's almost like rival gangs that will line up. She sent me a video the other day. One crop of birds up here, a smaller crop of birds over there. And the small ones will dart in every so often. Mm -hmm. The big ones will chase them off. So I had my son chase, or one of our sons, chase the crows away. And the minute the crows went away, all the small birds swooped in. So it was kind of like, oh no, I don't know what I just did. I shouldn't mess with their cycle, just let them do it. This is some of the bird damage. So they'll, they'll peck a hole. And this is one of my favorite varieties called Vasilika Sika. It's a, it's a Greek fig. It ranges from small, medium to large. So, so the size does vary. See this little, peck here we may be able to salvage some of this but that's some of the damage they can do or if they go after the whole thing the whole fruit will explode this is what i call splatter damage looks like a crime scene actually i guess technically it is a crime scene yeah but this fig also demonstrates something that i like to look for so this is a little bit of the honey or syrup that comes out and it can plug the hole can you of eat some that? varieties yeah you can i don't know if it actually has much flavor to it but it's usually an indication mm -hmm. that the fig is ripe. So I actually, on the same branch, there's a beautiful example of a really ripe Vasilika Sika right here. It tastes like boba. There are two ver uh, versions of this fig floating around. The origin is Greek. This one is one of my absolute why is it your favorite? Favorite. It has a very strong flavor. Very strong, very sweet flavor. Put it out and half of it? Yeah, or do you want to take a picture of it or get a close up? It has a little cavity. 
is the one when uh, your friends visited. Mm -hmm. They tried it. It's the one Lizette had some friends visit a couple years ago. This is the one they still talk. They they ask about. Right, really fast. What do you think? I think that this is the fig that all the other figs want to be. They want to hang out with. And <laughs> when you think of a great fig, this has great mouthfeel, sweetness, um, juiciness, not watery, um, filling, floral, everything. Uh huh. And so this is and a ber berry. I was going to say, and berry flavor. This is a berry fig. This one tastes to me like fruit roll up. Do you remember those those strawberry raspberry fruit roll-ups uh -huh. do you wait long enough and it gets just as it softens the interior thickens mm -hmm. and seems to I've congeal so it's less watery than the other one and i don't know if the high sugar content helps preserve it against that wateriness i don't know if that thickens the inside and makes it so it's got more of a solid mouth feel to it but this one even though this is small and i said they can be it can get even bigger i'll show you one that's quite big but even at, though it's small, just a couple of these will fill you up. This is a albacore de mola vermela. This is a Spanish fig from the Balearic Islands. This is Colonel Littman's Black Cross. Uh, I think the origin of this is unclear, okay. but it's phenomenal tasting. I have a question for you. Uh -huh. It seems like uh, we have figs that come from a bunch of different places around the world. How can they all grow here? So we have a similar climate to the Mediterranean climate. What's our climate? Uh, so we're, uh, we're actually in the city of Orange in, in California. Our zone is somewhere between 9B and 10A. Uh, we have uh, roughly an acre of land and some are about 30 in-ground trees and maybe a thousand potted uh, trees. And the nice thing about figs is they will fruit on first year wood. So this is all new growth and you'll see it's putting figs on the new growth. And uh, some figs will also put fruit on last year's growth and they'll usually fruit that first, what's called a breba crop. So brebas usually ripen June, July, so maybe breba end of means May. first crop? Okay. That's the, the breba. And then this is called the main crop. The main crop typically tastes better, although there's a little bit of debate as to why they taste better. Is it because they're growing during the hotter part of the season mm. when the tree is able to uh, get more resources? Breba sometimes will start to ripen or at least grow before there are any leaves because it's growing on the wood that's already established. So sometimes they'll grow first before the leaves fully form. So I noticed this last year, I don't know if it's because of the weather, sometimes some of the trees don't go fully dormant. So what would you consider the breba or the real crop. Uh, so I would say it's breba if it's growing on the established wood. Okay. So you see how there's, uh, you've got to take a closer look. Some trees you'll see have a bump on them, a node. If you'll see, you'll see the node here. So typically there'll be three spots. There'll be a leaf scar, which is where the leaf comes from. There'll be a a uh, growth node where you can get a new branch coming from, then there'll be a bud where the fruit will develop from. So sometimes we'll call it double buds. If you see double buds, you know the fruit is forming because one of those buds is going to be fruit. After that forms, the next year, you can have from those same buds a fruit forming. So if you've already picked a fruit from it and your tree can form a breba, the next year you may notice you're getting fruit from that area. So this is albacore de mola vermela. Albacore wow. is a Spanish fig, again, from the Balearic Islands, from the collection of the world famous Montserrat Pond. Albacore itself is an Arabic word though. So it, it references- Albacore like the fish? Um, um, I guess it sounds like the fish. It's spelled a little, it's spelled the same actually, just without the E. Um, <laughs> But the Arabic heritage is different, it's al Oh, okay. Oh, so it's uh. So it, okay, yeah. so it's just changed. So the name has been uh, maintained in Spanish history. So this is Albacore de Mola Vermela, so go ahead and try it.
Do you know what bakor means? Because al means the. I want to say it's some sort of veil or covering. I have to I have to look it up. Hmm. I'm not as impressed with this one. This one has um, what I feel is a stereotypical like um, purple fig skin taste. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's. This is not a wow thing. Yeah. Right? The taste doesn't come up. This to me has a, it's like a stealth flavor. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of sweetness in the background, a little bit of mild fig flavor in the background. So to me, this fig, even though it's big and it's dense and it's meaty, there's not a lot of honey, there's not a lot of syrup, and the flavor is more in the background. So this is something where I think if you put it on toast. I was thinking this can be paired with some burrata cheese and this can have some honey sprinkles on top. Uh -huh. Or if you were to put it on toast, it would be your main, you would appreciate the toast more than the fig, mm -hmm. but you'd still say, oh, it tastes good, mm -hmm. but you're, you're going more for toast. Whereas some of the other ones, you put it on toast, you're saying, wow, this fig They're is really good. And the toast is the accompaniment, yeah. I get it. Now, this fig is probably the one that started the whole fig addiction. We started with five small trees, and when I was trying to figure out which ones do I need to have, I came across an internet post saying, I just tasted the perfect fig, or I just had the perfect fig. So that's the one and, to blame. <laughs> and it was this one, Colonel Littman's Black Cross. And I went crazy. I think I spent $200 trying to get it. And I got it, and I ended up failing, <laughs> unfortunately. But that spurred me to try lots of different ones. Beautiful. I finally got this about two years later, and I agree. This one is a fantastic. So look at this. This one uh, is anywhere from medium to, uh, let's say medium to medium large. Very, uh, you've got a thin skin on the inside, tight eye, small cavity. It has slight uh, browning here. Is that okay? This one. Oh. This one should be okay. Okay, so that's natural or normal to, for this one. Want me to try it first? Yes, please. Didn't have to ask you twice, did I? Mm. <laughs> that's perfect. Let's see. Mm. All right. Why don't we just grow a lot of this one? <laughs> That's a good question. Something when you try something like this, I think once you get to the top end, you just need a couple of each. I want to try all of the different ones. I will say though, I don't think it's as sweet, but it's flavorful. It um, tastes like honey. You know, like honey's. I mean, it can be sweet, I guess, but it, it's very subtle. Um, it's very, the mouthfeel of it though is almost tacky. Maybe it's the- Like gummy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. less, less, less tack, more gum, yeah. Um, would that be that it's overripe or has no, less I, water or that's just its flavor profile? Well, one of the things I like about the different types of figs is, so I've seen some people eat just the inside, mm -hmm. almost like a banana. like. They don't know, maybe they don't like the skin. But what I appreciate is sometimes the skin adds a different texture, a different level of texture. This texture to me tasted like grapes, like a Concord grape almost. This one to me is like a cherry grape. We have one called raspberry latte oh, later. That's my favorite. You uh, to me, this is similar to raspberry latte, mm -hmm. but the texture is just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And for me, the the skin here is it, not, in, doesn't contrast with the flavor or the texture. It's not like the Lardaro where the skin is thicker right. and has a different texture. Here, to me, this is all one gradient. The texture, yeah, the skin's just a little bit thicker than the dense, than the flesh, but the flesh is really dense and the skin is really thin. So that gradient is really close. See, I thought that the skin tasted kind of like, you know when you pop a grape in your mouth that you can like pop it off the skin? Uh -huh. That almost tasted like it. Not a bad thing, uh -huh. not a bad thing. But it's phenomenal, right? And it has a little bit of acidity. You said it's not, it, it's honey. To me, it has a little bit of that cherry, maybe grape in it. And then there's just a slight acidity that It tastes pops like on candy to me. It tastes like candy to me. I think that it tastes like I'm, I can eat that as a gummy bear. To me, this is a beautiful fruit. This is a great example of a fig that has been attacked by a bird. You see the rigid edges, um, you can tell that little beak has gotten to it. So I guess birds really love us here. And you know what? I've actually seen them when they're flying over the house. 
and as soon as they uh, see our yard, like you just see them swoop down, like this is a destination. Oh, it's really frustrating when I see them. This may look like just another green fig, but this is uh, a phenomenal fig called white Algiers. It, uh, uh, some figs are named according to the color, so it's not necessarily white, it's green, but we'd consider this a white fig because it lightens up a little bit, but isn't quite yellow. And Algiers, the name it came, uh, comes from like brown turkey, brown fig from turkey. So white Algiers, this, uh, this is a small fig. You can tell it's ripe because it's drooping down. It has an amazing flavor, a great balance of uh, sweetness, flavor, and texture. And uh, this is one that uh, I had shared with a couple friends last year. And one of my good friends, actually, he wasn't too impressed with it last year. He thought it was just a, an average fig. But he came back this year and he said, wow, this is an amazing, amazing fig. So he tried it again? Yeah. Well, sometimes one of the things that I'll, you'll notice with figs is the first year fruit sometimes doesn't quite match mm. the, the true flavor profile. I don't know if it's an immature fruit thing, immature tree thing, if some trees take a while to get going. But um, the first year ours didn't actually fruit. But the second year, I the second year it did fruit and it tasted amazing. That was last year. Maybe your friend just had something sweet before, and so his tongue was weird. No, he tried it again this year, and he said this was a phenomenal fig. So this is white Algiers, small, wow. packs quite a punch. This is it's one beautiful. of those wow figs. They're all wow figs, it sounds like. We try to collect only the wow figs. This is one of the ones, when, when we harvest the figs, I always try and give this to the family last because it's one of the ones that blows your mind away. Wow. Okay. Great texture. Sweet. When it's combined with, like when you have it all together, the addition of the skin has that honey. I don't know if it's in the base or near the skin, but a lingering taste. Um, wow. All right. Fine. Yeah, it, it can leave Fine. you speechless. <laughs> One of the hardest things about growing these types of figs is when you have a lot of top end, top tier figs, the flavors can kind of blend in with the, one another. Mm -hmm. What I love about this one is even amongst a crowded field of top tier figs, this one stands out. This next tree is one of our family's favorites. It took about three years to produce. I thought it was a dud until, um, until it started to actually make fruit. And the fruit were breathtaking, outstanding, mind-blowing. Pick, pick an adjective. So uh, this is why we actually let it grow. Initially, you know, we like to keep them somewhat tamed, but this one we said, you know what? Let's make it accessible to the children. Let it just fall on them. Let it rain figs on them. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful fig. It's called Bordesa Blanca Negra. It also comes from the Balearic Islands, from the collection of, uh, from the Pons collection, P-O-N-S. Um, it starts off green, but ripens, uh, it turns into this black with green stripes, and that's how it ripens. And you can eat it just before it's fully ripe. It'll still have a strong, tasty flavor. But to me, I love the flavor and the texture of this fig. So this one is closer to fully ripe, and this one is, the smaller one is actually fully ripe. This one comes from where? Spain, the Balearic Islands. Mm. Small islands in the Mediterranean. Okay, did you want to cut it in half? We'll cut it some more, yeah. Thank you. All right, let's try. So the name of this one is? Bordesat Blanca Negra. Mm -hmm. This one, maybe it's because it's in the shade, but it's refreshing. Um, it tastes like it has, um, like an agua fresca. Like it's fresh, but I, it could just be temperature. Who knows? Um, juicy. This one's juicy. But still. Yeah, but still flavorful. Um, mm hmm So comparing it to the previous one. This one still has um, a fullness to it, 
but it tastes juicy. It doesn't taste as gummy as the other one. The other one was more chewy, uh -huh. <clears throat> excuse me. But this one, when I put it in my mouth, it felt like just having an excellent, not orange flavor, but you know when you have like a nice, juicy, refreshing orange? Same thing with this one. This one's a nice, juicy, refreshing fig. Full of flavor, mm -hmm. not watery at all, um, mm. but not gummy. Mm. That's good. To me, the skin has that textural difference we were talking about, mm -hmm. but the taste of the skin is a little more bland. Mm. So it's, uh, whereas most of the other ones, the skin enhanced the flavor mm -hmm. because it added the texture, mm -hmm. but didn't necessarily have that blandness. To me, the skin here has a little more blandness to it, which actually doesn't detract from the flavor of the fig because the interior is so thick and big, mm -hmm. it actually, you get this contrasting battle in your mouth, which I think enhances the sweetness, almost like a palate cleanser built into the fig. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's a little chewy. The, the, the skin itself is a little chewy. Like I can still feel it stuck to one of my molars. Uh -huh. So, But I love this fig. To me, any new fig we have has to beat this fig. Okay. So this to me is the new, baseline or standard. All right. So uh, this is the Smith fig. It's not the prettiest fig. Uh, it ripens to a partial green, partial purple, um, but it has an outstanding flavor. Now I picked, this is actually a bad one. This is what I mean by they, they start to go bad. You see little, I squeeze a little bit. And I see you fly might see, in there. Yeah. Wow. Now, there was a beetle that came out of it earlier, but you yeah, can see a little it. bit of that browning here. Look at the fly. Yeah. Okay. There was another bad one here. It just started to split. Looks like we caught it. So maybe just yesterday is when it started to go bad. And it's okay to just throw it back? I just toss them. Okay. Yeah, yeah I see the bubbles Did on you see that the one? bubble when yeah. I squeezed it? Yeah. Ooh. This one may be a day old. It went bad. So. That's that, but this Smith one is an outstanding one. It's one I'd say that um, every fig grower should have. Okay. Try it out. Right. Definitely sweeter, thicker skin. Um, has a little bit of um, a citrus note to it. I'm not sure. I I think it's it's good, but I like other ones more. You like the other ones more. This yeah. one happened to be maybe a little less sweet than mm -hmm. I'm used to it being. Typically, when I taste the Smith, I will describe. Whereas the other ones may have a heavier berry flavor, mm -hmm. somewhere between strawberry or raspberry. Maybe they tend a little more towards the raspberry, almost mm -hmm. like a savory sweet. Mm -hmm. This one I usually feel is more of a lighter berry, almost more strawberry, more bright and flavorful in the mouth. It was a little washed out. Where is this from? Smith? Uh, I think the Smith family named it, and I want to say they're in American South, American Southeast, something like that, but it was named after the family. I don't know the true origin of the fig. So otherwise. it's an American fig. All right. So this is uh, Joël Rouge. This comes from... Um, uh, yeah, well, at least from a French collector named Thierry, who, uh, who has a website, Figs du Monde, and that has a uh, French fig nursery. But he'll, he'll, the figs don't necessarily all come from France. He just grows them. We saw a little latex there in the skin. But he'll, he'll travel around the Mediterranean basin collecting um, figs. And he does a great job documenting the history and origin. So, Joël Noir. Joël Rouge. Oh, Joël Rouge. Joël Noir is back there. Ah, okay, Rouge. What's rouge? Red. Jewel, so red jewel. You try it. I've tried it before. I think I've had it in its... Uh-huh. Uh, when it's uh, been a little tastier. Or is it supposed to taste like this? It, it tastes I think this one may be a day or two under ripe. Just starting to show some cracks. Okay. Could have gone a little bit longer. This is the tree here. It could go just a little bit longer. The one I picked was about similar to this. So needed maybe another day, mm -hmm. possibly two. But you can taste from there, 
you get a preview of what it would taste like fully ripe. It tastes like a green um, green olive, not a green olive, a green grape to me. Uh huh. Not sweet, but mm. a little tart. A little tart. So this one had a little bit more acidity. Mm -hmm. I think give it a couple more days would have been sweet, not super sweet, not overwhelmingly sweet, refreshingly sweet, more of a lighter berry flavor. Will you find figs that are are tart or is it mainly for sweetness that they're better? Um, you, some have more acid to them. So okay. you want to have one that has a nice, um, well, it depends on your, your palate, but yeah, I'd say a nice balance to it, nice balanced flavor. Okay. So this one has a nice balanced flavor to it. Also very sweet, very juicy, um, not quite as dense as some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Very flavorful though. And has a thicker skin too. And I think that was uh, showed when you separated it from the latex. I thought it was honey. <laughs> so usually when I look at the other figs, they're big and green and lush. If I were to see this, I would say, what's wrong with it? Is this dying? Is it, <laughs> did we water too much? Is it missing something? What's this? What's going on here? So you're right. Sometimes yellowing of leaves can indicate some sort of nutritional deficiency. But in this case, this is a variegated plant. So it has a mutation, a uh, relatively unstable mutation where it uh, has a problem with iron, and um, which is what gives it the green color. Do you have to supplement with and iron? So you don't have to supplement with iron. For some people, this is a nice cosmetic or aesthetic appearance because it's different. And in some varieties of figs, the, the mutation is more stable than others. And it's variable. So actually, this branch here is a graft from the same fig tree, but the graft lost a mutation. Mm -hmm. So um, if you get the if you get it growing from where one of the, the stripe nodes are, you'll end up with stripes on the fruit or subsequent branches. So if you want to maintain the stripe, you should prune accordingly uh, to maintain it. Now this also has another great example of um, fruit developing where the nodes are. And you can see the fruit are developing on the green wood. So this is all new wood from this past year. So this is the main crop. And I do see the stripes on the wood itself. That's really cool. Yeah. Now this is a variegated tree called variegated uh, CDA or Constantine d'Algerie. Um, it's uh, one of the favorites of a famous fig collector named Dato uh, Sayed Elias. He's from Malaysia. So. What um, is the flavor profile for this one? None of ours so, are ripe yet, so we can't cut this, into it. This is a large honey fig. Mm. Large, sweet honey fig. I can't wait. This is raspberry latte. It's one of my favorites, but it does have a tendency to split, um, which means sometimes the bugs beat us to it. So I picked this one. It's not fully ripe yet, unfortunately, but I think this is the best we're going to get from it today. Thank you. You're welcome. At the moment, unripe, it tastes like store face. It's not a bad start. Mm -hmm. little more to me um, acid profile this acid tartness than the store figs but actually in a good way mm. a little bit more latex even There's, I feel a stickiness around my lips now this one is called gold Morocco from Morocco mm. now inside doesn't look too golden okay but uh, we've got to mention one of the things about our location is that uh, we uh, have the fig wasp and the fig wasp um, it's not a stinging wasp it's a it's a small bug it looks like a tiny fruit fly or an ant uh, like a queen ant with wings and they will pollinate the figs and when they pollinate figs the figs will be bigger juicier sweeter and can change the, the internal profile of the fig so can this one be golden without the wasp Yes, so there are some examples of some figs that look more golden mm -hmm. or, or have a more yellow interior mm -hmm. or a little orange interior yeah, those. before they're um, pollinated and after pollination, um, they will um, be darker.
a little bit more watery. Thanks for joining us uh, today. Uh, we had a, a lovely time sharing uh, so a little bit of our fig journey and uh, know-how with you guys. Um, we do sell some plants and we do sell some cuttings either online through different forums like Our Figs or um, on a website called Figbit or you, you can reach me separately. Other than that, um, we do sh sometimes share wood with the Scion Exchange. Yeah, thank you so much for coming to our home. Uh, we have a ton of figs and it's our pleasure to be able to share whatever we do know with you. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye. Hassan. I'm Lizette Hassan. This is my daughter and she's my helpful uh, helpful hand around the house and in the yard. Breakfast today. Pancakes that I made. Yeah she made the pancakes. Who made the tortillas? My grandma and me. Yeah. Who helps me plant? This morning. And? Sometimes me. Yeah sometimes you. You like the strawberries right? So do you like it when we make, uh, let's say, strawberries on the pancakes? Yes. Or, yeah? And um, we pick blueberries from um, our yard and put it on pancakes and we buy bananas, but we also get strawberries from our, gar from our garden. What we do with the sugar cane is we cut it into small pieces, then we chew it um, with the flavor in it, then we spit it out when it, the flavor's gone. But you like the raspberries that I picked for you, right? I picked them. You picked them. There are cherries, there are plums, there are persimmons. Yeah, we have cherries and plums, but that was a couple months ago. I uh, like mandarins too. She likes, uh, let's see, sumo, she likes encore, she likes daisy, gold nugget, Tahoe gold, Yosemite gold. I don't think the kids know the difference between all of them. They just have... Aren't they all the same? <laughs> they're all they're, they look similar, but they're actually different. Hi, welcome. Hi. An... <laughs> We've got another episode of Let's Find Out. Hi, right, let's do it again, sir. <laughs> I'll edit that out. Not good. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> All right.